So basically, this is you know, like a, a model. Are you familiar with the uh, Scrum, like Agile programming approach? Right. So uh, basically, we we want students to do the you know, fast iteration by eighth week, and uh, there are like, two week increment. Basically, this is the sprint. We do not change like a uh, requirement or spec during this time, but to make sure students will finish it. And we release this one, so we will create one branch for you know, bug fix, one branch for also <coughs> creating new version. And we typically ask sponsor mentor to you know, review and test source code and uh, give our students feedback maybe you know, or next week. So we have a weekly conference call so release, explain what students did, try to get feedback from our sponsor. So did become a new feature request or a backlog in, in like a, a Scrum approach and try to do like a third and the fourth. If a sponsor mentor was a really active, student can do like a, a four iteration, but sometimes they don't have time. So kind of, you know, students do this, but the uh, bug fix keeps going. And maybe like you know, sometimes students don't get enough or feedback, then they can to do like a fourth iteration. But this way, they can demonstrate you know, they really did a good job. Like one shot is dangerous because try to integrate everything here. If a software doesn't work, then they will they will not get good grade. So that was a, a kind of risk management from a student point of view. And of course, business point of view, by releasing this one, typically, you know, we will, okay, we deliver it and you know, get feedback, then you know, we send the invoice. So we, you know, as a company, we can maintain good cash flow. Do you know that a profitable company can bankrupt? Have you ever heard of the story? Which, which company? A, profit, like a company, the profitable, but you know, they, they get bankrupt because of cash flow <coughs> problem. In other words, you know, or to manage your company, you have to pay your suppliers, your people, you need cash. If you try to get you know, or pay at the end of a project, you need your own money to pay as you go. So you know, from that point of view, this kind of incremental release is good because if we are a company, then you know, from here, okay, they said, okay, send the input cash will come back so you can you know, float. So uh, although this is the HGI design course, uh, most of you know, our staff members have industrial experience, so we try to you know, teach how to manage business also. And finally, you know, they write the report and so on and deliver uh, everything. So this works fairly well. Also, a uh, waterfall approach, many students find extremely uncomfortable if a sponsor or uh, mentor said, okay, better your progress, try something else. But this kind of scrum approach, students are pretty, like, you know, they are already aware of things could be changed, or can be changed. So it's easier to work with uh, you know, uh, new challenges. So. Another type of uh, project is uh, sometimes students are asked to program like a cell broadband engine that is the IBM, Sony, you know, other company created a special chip used in the uh, PlayStation 3 or uh, GPU, NVIDIA, CUDA, probably you are familiar with it. And also sometimes a uh, field program about FPGA, special hardware. This case, you know, uh, we often need uh, electrical engineers to basically develop algorithms before, you know, uh, the team can uh, basically port and optimize code for hardware. So we often find the high level of algorithm development, also creating test cases using like a MATLAB simulink. This kind of tool is good. Then port to C not for all hardware dependent, but maybe like under uh, Linux or something. Then finally, you know, port and optimize. So, so that can look like this. So algorithm team develop fast one, like a light blue. 
that it's stable, that you know, uh, translate into C, C++, the finally hardware dependent optimization and coding. This approach also helps you know, some <coughs> students to learn new technology because many students are not familiar with like C uh, parallel processing or uh, special hardware. So basically, uh, some students can learn new technologies. And this way, if anything goes wrong here, we know it's not algorithm, only like implementation for this hardware. If a team starts everything from this level, they cannot tell if an algorithm was incorrect or what their implementation was not right. So uh, we found out, although this takes like a tedious three steps, but uh, in general, team, you know, they, they are able to create a uh, stable software faster. So this is something that like, we learned. Another case is uh, like uh, some like uh, AI type, like a uh, classifier, face recognition, photo recognition, or other <coughs> types of like, recognition problems, or a business or process improvement. Such a case, industrial management students are, are often part. <coughs> so they can use their tools, statistical analysis, Again, rather than writing code with like the Java or something, it's often easier to use MATLAB, R, this is like a statistical analysis software, or like a Python is more general. But uh, it's often easier to use more high level generic uh, software. Then after that, you know, create a solution using you know, for Python, Java, that kind of thing. And if server is necessary, we heavily depend on like a virtual machine such as a virtual box or VMware server and like a LAMP platform because it's easier to you not know, develop, customize, and also like a deliver. So, and uh, our students should be able to talk to a variety of like engineering language. I'm an electrical engineer, so I think of more like a signal information flow, but mechanical engineer think everything in terms of like an energy. So you know you need to learn to you know, communicate with the different you know, engineers. It's really important. And uh, uh, probably you are familiar with like a, a pair program, like two people work together, so like uh, you can like, uh, bounce your ideas. Also, like one person write the code, the other is better doing code review as you go. Similarly, if we put only like a one, let's say, like, you know, electrical engineer into mechanical engineer dominating team, it doesn't work well because this student cannot, you know, better oh, balance ideas well. So we we you know, we found that like a paired or development works, even like a non all software type project. Make sure team had like you know or every student has someone to bounce ideas, someone to you know like criticize the review their uh, design process. <coughs> so this is like a software. Like I have a <coughs> software background, so you know pair the program is good, and uh, we were able to apply that concept in the like, engineer design project in general. So. And the other thing is, uh, if a student wants to use you know, open source in their project, we first you know, teach them open source is not you know, one thing. Each like, a license has a different meaning and the requirements, restrictions. Okay, are you familiar with GPL license? All right, okay. Do you know the difference between GPL and BSD license? What you can do and what you can't do? Right, so if you, you know if a student start to uh, use GPL license, then our sponsor is required to disclose the entire you know software. But sometimes you know like a sponsor doesn't want to do it because not so much of software, but you know what it does is like a software uh, their business improvement. Then you know they don't want to disclose you know their business process. Software is okay, just code. But they don't want to disclose, you know, their business process and so on. So, uh, for software project, we we often like you know talk to students regarding open source. What's all about open source? Do's and don'ts, and make sure sponsor mentors are okay with you know all software. 
also documentation is important. Even like a uh, first thing, you know, uh, the last semester, Professor uh, Ron Igrash uh, asked us, our students to de uh, develop portable environmental sensor system. He wanted to make everything uh, open source, including software. Such a case, you know, uh, our students made sure every piece of code they borrow, you know, check their uh, license. And the one was there was no information over uh, license issues. So they contacted the author and you know what they are allowed to do, what they cannot do. So you know this become again important. So both ways try to you know keep information you know, private, you must understand, you know, or license or associated with you know every piece of software. Opposite side is also true. If you wanna make you know all your software open, make sure you do not infringe other people or, or intellectual property and copyright. So again you have to you know, check carefully. So so uh, at our lab, we create uh, like a pseudo real world. So students get similar to you know co-op experience. They work with the real world engineers, and we provide you know things they need to know beyond you know textbook knowledge, but you know, real world practice. That's what we do at the design lab. So, so any questions? We had the talk by Kirk Gelbert, one of the uh, Sensor developers. He gave, came and gave a talk in, a, in what the difficulties associated with open source is. He gave us a talk. Okay, and great, and right. So right. The, the, the students are aware of that. Okay, that's good. So, yeah. So, these are all the sponsors sitting there. Right, typical like sponsor. At the end of the semester, sponsor uh, mentor was come, and the students need to do presentation. Uh, they are evaluated. This is the one of the you know, evaluation process. This is a three-credit, four-credit class? Uh, three-credit. So we expect uh, you know, students to put uh, around like 10, 10 hours a week. So 15 weeks, so 150 yeah. month hours per student. I mean, it's a group project. It is uh, right. 600. So if you are a young major with a computer and systems engineering, I, know I will see you soon or later. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, if you haven't seen his lab, it's a worthwhile place to go and see, and it's a great place. Right, it's a, a, in, inside of JEC building, third floor. So if you go, you know, uh, do you know like bending machines in JEC building? Well, that's the most important thing you have to know, right? <laughs> Mental room and the bending machine, these are two important things you have to know. <laughs> so near the, uh, if you go all the way to the student lounge, the last corridor, you know, hallway you walk, and we are at the end. That is our meeting area. And if you are curious what kind of project student did, or uh, we use like a poster session for midterm design review. And also they they update all uh, their portal so you can see you know, what kind of project our students worked. Some are posted outside so you can see easily too. So. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.